Tonight, the Pirates coming in to this game with a record of 13 and 10. World West Rankin struggling of late, coming into this game with a record of 11 and 13. The two teams have played each other twice this season. Back on December the 14th in the Rankin County Tournament. Or excuse me, uh, yeah, December 14th in the Rankin County Tournament. North West Rankin won by a score of 58-51. And then on 12-28, uh, Northwest Rankin lost to Pearl 68-43 as the Pirates uh, literally put a whooping on them, if you will, that night. 15-9 after one quarter, defeated a, a, a outscore of 15-8 in the second, 22-12 in the third, and then 16-14 in the fourth as the Pirates dominated in that ball game in every aspect. In that game, Jabari Escoffrey lit it up with 26 points. Calvin Spann had 20 points in that contest to lead the Pearl Pirates scoring attack. These two teams, again, the Pirates have been playing some really good basketball of late. They defeated Canton Tuesday night this week by a score of 53-50 in a game they led by 10, had to battle back and uh, hold on to win the game. And uh, a close game, but a game that Coach Evans really is important to him. He's from Canton, so that was going home to him. He loves to go back to Canton, play basketball, especially when he can come away victorious. Uh, these two teams, again, both have played some good basketball at times. Both have played some bad games at times. Northwest Rankin has been struggling of late. When you look at common opponents, you look at a lot of splits down the way on common opponents between the teams and how they've done. So tonight, it'll just see which team shows up for these Pearl Pirates. We are going to probably see Dequarius Larkin in the game tonight for the first time this season as he's been coming off an injury, and we'll look to see him in the game tonight. Uh, according to Coach Evans. So we're ready to turn it over to Chris Purnell with the starting lineups here tonight at Pearl High School. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the boys' contest. First of all, the roster for the Northwest Rankin Cougars. Number two, Anthony Gaines. Number 12, Jadarius Scott. Number 23, Terry Brown. Number 25, Marcus Watson, Jr. And number 40, Robert Lewis. Cougars are coached by Coach David Sanders. And now for your Pearl Pirates. A 6'4", sophomore guard. Number two, Deontay Champion. A junior, 6'3 forward. Number 12, Jabari Escoffrey. A five foot seven guard, sophomore, number 25, Chris Cooper. A 6'2 senior forward, number 42, Calvin Spann. And a 6'1 senior forward, number 15, Trey Harvey. Your Pirates are coached by Coach Russell Evans. That's the starting lineups from by Chris Purnell, public address announcer here for Pearl High School basketball action. 
and we're just moments ready, moments away from the opening tip for tonight's game. It'll be the Pearl Pirates and the Northwest Rankin Cougars here at Pearl High School. The Cougars will be wearing their black uniforms with the old gold numbers and trim. The Pirates will be wearing their white home uniforms with the navy blue numerals and the old gold trim. And we're just moments away from the opening tip, trying to get all of my stat sheets up and in order here for us. So I can make you think I'm smart when I start talking about this game in just a moment. Calvin Spann will be jumping center for the Pirates. And he'll be jumping tonight against number 12 for Northwest Rankin, Jadarius Scott. And we're ready to get underway. And it'll be controlled by the Cougars as they'll open the game with the ball. Just underway, Northwest Rankin and Pearl here at Pearl High School. Deflected away, Pirates come away with a loose ball. Calvin Spann, Dish, Jabari Scoffrey off the glass, score, and the Pirates take the early lead on the turnover by Northwest Rankin. And timeout taken by the Cougars, 7.41 to go in the first, back in 30 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road, or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Coach Sanders obviously didn't like that first possession for Northwest Rankin, 19 seconds into the game, and he takes his first timeout. And another turnover as Strip down on that end. I think Calvin Span, oh, excuse me, Jabari Scoffrey got the strip, and the Pirates get the ball back yet again. Trey Harvey out high to Chris Cooper. He'll set the offense. Left side to Deontay Champion, who hasn't been seeing a lot of playing. You know, skipped up any time early on in the or middle of the season. Started early, and now he's back into that starting rotation. Coach Leanne Purnell, softball coach, coming in, saying hello. Deontay Champion scores the basket. Six forty-five to go in the first. Pirates up four to nothing. Penetration into the lane, shots up, no good, but I think a foul is called. It is called against Jabari Escoffrey, his first, first team foul. That's going to have Terry Brown will be shooting two. On the season, 73% shooter. 65 of 89 coming into the game. Had a big article in the newspaper about Tariq Brown not too long ago. If, you ever get, if we get a chance, we'll give you a close-up shot of his left hand. As I'm not sure if it was a uh, deformity from birth or what it is, but his left hand is deformed. We'll just put it that way. It's basically, it doesn't have much of a hand. But he's overcome that disability and a really good basketball player for Northwest Rankin. Second leading scorer on the team, 13.2 points per game. Just a really good athlete. Three-point shot, no good. Rebound taken down by Trey Harvey. It's Jadarius Scott couldn't get the three to go. Trey Harvey takes a three, and he can't get it to go as well. And the Cougars come down with a rebound. Long up the court. Lewis tried to go baseline, was blocked from doing so. Gets the ball back into the hands of Gaines. Tries to penetrate. Gets it to Brown. Back out high they go to Watson. Marcus Watson, Jr. 4-2 the score. Brown, left side. Three-point shot is good by number two, Anthony Gaines. And the Cougars take a lead by one.
right side to span. Jabari Scott, he's setting the offense out high. 5-4 the score, 5-10 to go in the first. Coach Evans, Pirates content to be real content. Trey Harvey on the alley-oop, and he slams it home. Well set up, perfect pass by Jabari Escoffrey, and Trey Harvey gets the alley-oop high above the rim and slams it home. Spin move in the paint, lost it. Control come down to the Pirates. Trey Harvey with a lead pass. Lays it up with the left hand. He wanted to go up and duck it, but he realized he didn't have the elevation, so he just lays it in. 8-5, Pirates in the lead. We've seen Deontay and Trey try to put that together, but unable to do so. Out of bounds by the Cougars. Another turnover. But that time they're able to work it to perfection. The Cougars just kind of lulled to sleep as the Pirates are just lackadaisical out high. De Deontay and Jabari and Chris Cooper just tossing around out here at midcourt. And Trey sneaks in behind everybody and gets open for the dunk. Deontay dishes in low to span, off the glass, scores. Five-point lead for the Pirates. 3.56 to go in the quarter. Up into the paint, shot by Gaines, no good. Rebound, we've got a foul call. Foul's called against Calvin Spann, his first, second team foul. At the line shooting will be Robert Lewis. He makes the first free throw. Not much more exciting in basketball than that alley-oop pass for the dunk. Second free throw good as well as Lewis hits them both on the season 54, but he hits two for two on that exchange. Cross court to Deontay, dish to Harvey, can't control it, keeps the ball, shot no good as he hit the air ball from short range. And the Cougars come away with it. Three-point shot by Brown as Tariq Brown answers with a three on the other end. And we're tied at 10. 3.20 to go in the first. Turnover by the Pirates. Brown on the dribble. Out high goes to Gaines. Dishes, shots up, no good. Round, rebound down by the Pirates. And a foul. I think against Calvin Spann. It is two on Calvin Spann. Demaris Brown checks in. Calvin will sit down with those two personals early. Inbound to Scott. Dishes to Brown. And a whistle away from the ball. Three seconds against the Cougars. That's another turnover. 3.06 to go in the first. Scores tied at 10. Cooper walks it up the court. Left elbow jumper wide open and can't hit the shot was Deontay Champion. And the Pirates chase it down and come away with the rebound. Deontay thought about the three, elected not to take it. Cooper will take it from the left wing. In and out, no good. Rebounded by the Cougars. Three-point shot. In and out, back in by Gaines. Went down in the cylinder. I looked like it was coming back out and then settled back through. 13-10. Cougars now lead. Morris Brown dishes the champion, lays it up over the front of the rim, scores the basket. 13-12. Malik McNair and Seamus Tucker getting ready to check in. Terry Brown hits another three-point basket. And it's a four-point lead. 
Jabarius Coffrey. Cooper, right side to champion. He'll take the three. Good. Deontay Champion settles in for the three. It's a one-point game. Brown pulls up from three. Off the mark. Rebound. Controlled by the Cougars. Tipped away. Loose. And Brown comes away with it for the Pirates and turns it over. Sixteen fifteen the score. Minute thirteen to go in the first. Pirates have led by four. Excuse me, led by five. A trail by four. One tie, three lead changes here in the first quarter. Into the corner, gains for three, no good. Rebound, controlled by the Cougars. Inside a minute. Watson out between the circles. Goes to the right side, leaves it for Brown. Long three-pointers, no good. Rebound, controlled by the Cougars. And loose on the floor, and the Pirates come away with a rebound. Come with a loose ball. Goffrey can't get his three to go. Xavier Howard chases down the loose ball. Jabari thinks about it again. This time he'll take it. No good. Cougars end up with the ball. Brown penetrates. Blocked. Deontay Champion goes up and gets the block. The other way. Into the paint, score the basket, and draw the foul is Malik McNair. The foul was called against Jadarius Scott, his first, first team foul. McNair, great job of getting the penetration, getting the shot up, scoring the basket. Now he'll try to complete the three-point play. We've had another lead change as the Pirates now take over the lead, 17-16. Four points, 4.4 on the clock. McNair will try to make it a two-point game with four seconds. And he does. Coach Evans hollering, man up, two seconds, one second, three-point, good if it goes, and it does at the buzzer. Score the basket by Mike Amos, who had checked into the game. 19-18, Cougars lead after one. Back in 60 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Sign Mart. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, Sign Mart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Sign Mart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Basketball. We begin the second quarter of play. Pearl trailing by one to the Northwest Rankin Cougars. Escoffrey into the corner to Brown. DeMaris looks to penetrate and is going to be called for the travel. Turnover by the Pirates. On the court for Pearl is DeMaris Brown, Deontay Champion, Jabari Escoffrey, Malik McNair, and Xavier Howard. Three Brown thought about the three, pulls up from 18 and hits the jumper, nails it. Ten points. He had eight in the quarter, just scored two there. Ten in this half for Tariq Brown. In and out, no good by Scoffrey. Rebound to the Cougars. And I think we're going to got a double dribble call. 
on the turnover. Irons will get the ball. Substitutions coming in for Coach Evans. Calvin Spann back in. Chris Cooper along with number five, Cameron Walker into the game. Cooper throws it away, out of bounds. Spann said he thought a Cougar hit it, but the referee didn't catch that, so it'll be a turnover by the Pirates. On the court for the Cougars is number three, Paraji McDonald. Number two, Anthony Gaines. Number one, Mike Amos. Tariq Brown. And also number 12, Jadarius Scott. Inside seven minutes, Cougars have a three-point lead. Also the ball, Amos out high to Brown, working against Spann. Behind the back, Spann strips it, going to take it in and lay it off the glass. No good. Calvin Spann gets the turnover and just misses the layup. Defense was on him, but he had the step, had the, the lead on him, and just couldn't get it to go. Penetrating his gains, pulls up from the block, shot, no good, but he'll draw the foul. Foul's called against number 25. Chris Cooper, first personal, fourth team foul. Gaines will go to the free throw line where he'll be shooting two. On the season, Gaines a 71% shooter. Been to the line 149 times, making 106 of them. He makes the first one here. Had more free throw attempts than anybody on this Cougar team this season. In and out, no good on the second one. Howard comes away with a rebound. Quickly up the court. Cooper brings it out high to McNair. Now Cooper will come out between the circles and set the offense. As we near the six minute mark in the half, cross court to McNair. Into the corner, Howard. Thrown away, Cooper against Brown. Brown's going to penetrate, go in hard, and we whistle for the offensive foul. Tariq Brown whistle for the offensive foul, his first. Second team foul. Four-point lead for the Cougars. Pirates have the ball. Cross court to Jabari. Double teamed in the corner. He's trapped there and he's going to call. A, did he get a timeout call? He was trying to and he did. Timeout call, 5.44 to go. Pirates trail by four. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh. Open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. 544 to go in the half. Pearl trails Northwest Rankin 22-18. Pirates have the ball. Jabari Scoffey had been trapped in the corner, was able to get a timeout call. McNair, Cooper, Spann. Jabari Scoffey and Cameron Walker on the court. Jabari Cooper pulls up from 18. Jumpers, good. Driving all the way in his games. He can't get his shot to go, but he'll draw the foul. And it'll be called against number five. That's Cameron Walker's first. Five team fouls. And that's going to send Gaines to the free throw line, shooting two. Again, I mentioned 71% shooter. One of two tonight. Trey Harvey will check back in between the two free throws. Malik McNair will sit down. Now the second free throw coming up. Makes both of these. He's three for four tonight. 
and it's back to a four-point lead, 24-20. Full court pressure being applied by the Cougars. Pirates will break it. Cooper crosses midcourt. Harvey down to span from 16, no good. And Jabarius Goffrey went up high going for a rebound. No foul was called. Jabari went up over the top, fell to the floor hard. Coach Sanders can't believe he didn't get a foul called on Jabari. And actually, they're giving the Pirates the ball. They ended up with a rebound. Three-pointer from the corner is good by Jabari Escoffrey. 24-23. Al pushing foul against Chris Cooper, his second. Sixth team foul. Northwest Rankin will inbound. That'll be Faraji McDonald inbounding right here in front of the scoring table. On the dribble goes McDonald. This is back, penetrating. And we got another foul by Cooper as they go down hard, falling over each other. That is three on Cooper. And Deontay Champion will check in. Cooper will sit down with those three personal fouls. And that's the seventh team foul. So at the line shooting will be Anthony Gaines. Shooting one plus the bonus. And he makes the first one. So now he'll get that bonus. 4.40 to go in the half, 25-23, Cougars lead. Both free throws good, make it 26-23. Cougars have led by four, Pirates have led by five. Five lead changes and a tie. And a pass almost thrown to us and into the scoring table is Deontay Champion, but he's okay. That's why they pad these things with some good padding for that. Santa's out of bounds off the Cougars, so it'll be pirate ball still. Jabari Scoffrey out high, Deontay champion. Last time they played this a little bit, they looked for Trey coming inside for it. Jabari will take the three this time and nail it. A downtown three-pointer, and we're tied at 26 with 4.10 to go in the half. Scott goes high in the air to retrieve the pass, dishes to McDonald, goes baseline, and Faraji McDonald scores the basket. Three fifty-five. Deontay for three, no good. And we've got a foul that's gonna be called against the Pirates, and it'll be against Cameron Walker. go the other way. Shooting free throws now will be Anthony Gaines once again. He'll get one plus the bonus. Eighth team foul. Now Gaines at the free throw line. Makes the front end. He'll get another one. He makes them both. Trap double team. They get it up to Deontay. Has his pass deflected. And it's out of bounds. And let's see whose way it's going. I think it's still going to be Pearl Ball. 30 to 26. Northwest Rankin matching their largest lead. Pearl has the ball. 340 to go in the half. Harvey, they're looking at a half court trap. There it comes. Which means you should have somebody open. Just a matter of being able to find him. Into the corner, McNair for three. Good! One point game. Cougars with the ball. Gaines dishes back to McDonald. Works it to Amos. Picked up there by Harvey. Amos penetrates, dishes. Gets his man in the air. Scott shot up off the back of the iron and no good. And so that goes the way of the Pirates. 3.06, 30 to 29. 
Pirates have the ball. Again, working against pressure. Span breaks it. Dishes inside to Deontay. Tries to make the extra pass. It's going to be deflected out of bounds. One to Deontay. Probably should have just taken the shot. He was about eight feet from the basket. Wide open. Thought he had Trey Harvey. Trey was covered, and the pass was too hard off of Trey and out of bounds. That's one Coach Evans. Deontay probably would like to see Deontay take that shot. Scott penetrates and gets it up and in. Once again, Pirates working on that pressure. Span pulls up from 10. No good. Rebound by the Cougars. Right now, out rebounding 10 7. The Cougars over the Pirates by my count. Coach Evans will go back and look at film and make sure my count's right. We don't take my word for it. We put official stats in. 2.15 to go, three point Cougar lead. Scott, way out high. Inside the paint, gains up and under, no good, rebound, taken down by the Pirates. Harvey looks to penetrate, shots up, did he score it? Nope. Offensive foul against Trey Harvey, his first personal, ninth team foul. Now Coach Sanders putting a lot of substitutes back in the game, mostly most of his starters going back into the game with the exception of Javon Horn and Jamal Paris. He's also got back in there Marcus Watson, Jr. Number 40, Robert Lewis. Yep, that's not most starters back in. Also 14, Javon Horn said him. Jamal Paris also in the game. Timeout taken. Minute 41 to go in the half. 32-29 Northwest. Back in 30 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Basketball. 1.40 to go in the half. Three-point lead for the Cougars. And they have the ball. Working against this Pirate defense. Watson way out high. Guarded by Scoffrey. Left side back to Watson. Now they're going to try to set it back up. Minute 20 to go. Make sure and stay tuned at the half. Tiffany Durr, dance team coach. Had a chance to talk to her back in the fall before the big competition. The Pirates were the best team in 5A. They didn't win the championship. Three-point shots, no good. Rebound tipped away, controlled by the Pirates. Calvin Spann goes the other way and is stripped of the ball, and the Cougars get it back. Basket up and in by number 14, Horn, and it's a five-point lead for the Cougars. Thirty-eight seconds to go. Harvey penetrates, lays it off the glass, scores the basket. Back to a three-point game. Again, the Pirates didn't win the championship. They were the highest-ranked 5A school in all of the dance team competitions. Coach Durr, tremendous job with that team. Up and under layup is good by number 25, Watson. Fifteen seconds, five-point Cougar lead. Harvey penetrates, pulls up, no good. Rebound by Champion is fouled as he tries to go back up. The foul, trying to see who it's called against. Have they told us yet? Foul's called against number 40, Robert Lewis, his first, third team foul. Excuse me, I must have missed one. That's the fourth team foul. I have to find out who the other was against. First free throw by Champion is good. 
four-point game, 8.2 seconds to go. But anyway, I had a good to have an interview with Coach Tiffany Durr at halftime of the boys' game, so stay tuned for that. Pirates come down with a rebound, and it's a jump ball, and nope, we got a foul. Fouls called against number 14, Javon Horn, his first, fifth team foul. Going to be pirate ball. Now they'll bring substitutes in. Trey Harvey, Seamus Tucker. They get it into Jabari. Five seconds. Inside, Trey Harvey off the glass. Score, and he draws the foul. Fouls called against Brown to Ree Brown, his second. And now Trey Harvey at the free throw line trying to complete the three-point play, make it a one-point game with 1.7 seconds in the half, and it's good. 1.7, shots up, good if it goes, no good. At the half, Northwest ranking 36, Pearl 35. We're going to take a break. When we come back, you'll hear that interview with Dance team instructor coach Tiffany Durr back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. I'm all about technology. I'm a people person. I use my phone for everything. Directions, texting friends, finding restaurants. I like to talk to people in person. To me, bank isn't a place I go. It's something I do. I like to go to the bank, sit down, talk things over. Basically, this is my bank. And this is my bank. Trustmark. They're just around the corner. They're wherever I am. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Tiff, let's talk a little bit about the dance team. And, and what a lot of people see, the dance team, of course, is pep rally. You get a chance to perform in the gym. And at, at the high school games during halftime, you get a chance to perform. Uh, but dance team is a lot more than a pep rally and a, and a one uh, show or one dance routine at a halftime of a football game. Tell me a little bit first about, I know, a selection process that you go through to, to select the girls that will be a part of your dance team. Okay. Uh, we have auditions in the spring. We're actually getting ready to start all over again, if you can believe that. And we haven't even finished out this year. But um, they come in for a week. They learn several different routines. They do our school's fight song. And at the end of the week, we have outside judges that come in and evaluate, you know, their skill level and their performance, and they will, you know, make the selection. Right. Now, when you say outside judges, what do you look for then as, as, as these judges are selected or, or whoever makes those selection? What type of qualifications do these judges need to have? Obviously, I guess they have to know something about dance and competition in that area. Right. They, they have a dance background. Okay. Um, the ones that we've gotten in the last few years have been out of state. Okay. Um, I have a contact and they just give me a few folks, you know, that have, you know, danced. Uh, the last few have been uh, girls who've danced for the Saint Stations okay. and they come in. Uh, we have two former dancers that are in their last season as Saint Stations dancers. Right. Awesome. So I'll just contact them and then they get a couple of the girls that they've danced with that I don't know, right. you know, to come in and, and make those selections. Dance is something, obviously I've never done it, but I, w I would assume just from the skill set it takes, these aren't girls that all of a sudden hit ninth grade and, hey, I want to be a part of the dance team. These are probably girls that have been dancing since they were four or five, maybe six years old and on all the way through, I guess. Tell me a little bit about that. Would that would be ideal. <laughs> However, we have a mixture. We have some that have danced, you know, all through, you know, growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and, that, you know, maybe they've taken really good quality dance. We right. have some that have just done it maybe when they were younger, like for fun, and then they got out of it and then decided, okay, I want to be on the dance team. So I took dance a long time ago. I need right. to get back into this. And then we have some that, you know, they try out for the first time. They don't even know that you count to eight in dance. Um, they okay. certainly don't know to, you know, how to prepare for a turn. Or, or anything right. as far as the technical aspect goes. Background wise for girls who are top level dancers, the ones that have the opportunity maybe to go on two sensations, things mm -hmm. like that, is it more gymnastics, more ballet, combination? What, what would you look for as a dance coach if you were looking at a girl's background 
to really look at the potential for it being a great dancer. Ballet, 100% ballet. We do have a couple this year who have some acrobatic skills. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've done karate or they've taken gymnastics in the past. And we use those to highlight our routines. We right. have a section in there this year where we have two girls that are doing front walkovers. Um, but for us, it's mostly if you have a, a strong ballet background, then you can do any of the different styles of dance. You would, be, do, you would do well at palm or jazz or, you know, hip-hop, kick. I mean, ballet is really the foundation for all of it. You mentioned kick, and of course, one of the things that everybody's familiar with, of course, is the Rockettes. It's the, the line, and all the girls are doing the kick. And, you know, when I watch that and the precision uh, that I see with that, whether it's a high school level or the college, or if you're watching something in the parades and stuff, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, or, or New Year's parades and things, uh, the timing of those and the, the coordination of that, it's just incredible. Tell me a little bit about where all that comes from, because all these girls have to be doing the same thing at the same time uh, in perfect beat to make work. Tell me a little bit about how that works and obviously, I guess, hours and hours of practice. It is. Synchronization is a huge part of our score sheet. At any competition that we go to, they're looking for, of course, technical ability, but then on top of that, they're looking for synchronization. They always tell you the you know, phrase that they use is, you want to look like one girl out there doing that routine. Um, and yes, the Rockettes do a fine job of that. Um, and we, we work really hard to get it synchronized, <laughs> and we have done well. Um, but, you know, we are dealing with uh, non-professionals sure. and exactly. teenage girls so that is something that we continue to work on but yes I agree that Rockettes are are amazing. I guess they kind of set a standard 50 years ago for things like that. Let me ask though when you talk about uh, the work with the girls like that and obviously you've got uh, teenage girls you've got teenage emotions things like that uh, how much of that comes into play into performance and I don't know I've heard football coaches and baseball coaches talk about their players and you know, they never know what's going on in their head when they take the field, and sometimes they seem like they're not there. Uh, does that come into play, I guess, too, with dance and girls? I think I've been really, really lucky. Um, I, it's very important for our girls, uh, and I feel like, I mean, we have competition next Friday night at state competition. We have competed in a few, you know, leading up to right. it just to kind of get the jitters out to get us prepared. But I know without a shadow of a doubt the next Friday night they will put more on that floor in those four minutes right. that we do those two routines than they have at any point before, you know, next right. week. Uh, I, I really trust them. I know that they... It, it's something that they want. They're very competitive. You know, it's important to them. They have like a huge sense of pride. They kind of don't want to let the teams in the past down that have won. It's like they have something to prove. Competition. Let's talk a little bit about that. It's just coming up next week. It's the big thing. Of course, you've had some many competitions throughout the fall. Talk a little bit about... I'm all about technology. I'm a people person. I use my phone for everything. Directions, texting friends, finding restaurants. I like to talk to people, in person. To me, bank isn't a place I go. It's something I do. I like to go to the bank, sit down, talk things over. Basically, this is my bank. And this is my bank. Trust Mark. They're just around the corner. They're wherever I am. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Sign Mark. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, SignMart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at SignMart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Basketball. We're at the half with the Pirates trailing the Cougars by one, 36-35. Largest lead for either team was five, and both teams had a five-point lead at one time. Pearl had six turnovers, eight rebounds. Northwest Rankin, seven turnovers, ten rebounds. Leading scorer for the Cougars, Anthony Gaines, 13. Terry Brown with ten. And Mike Amos with three and had five players with two each for, North, for the Pearl Pirates. Trey Harvey had nine. Deontay Champion, eight. Jabari Escoffrey, eight. Malik McNair had six. And then Chris Cooper and Calvin Spann, two each. Chris Cooper has three personals. Cameron Walker, two. And Calvin Spann, two on the fouls. Tariq Brown has three for the Cougars. We're underway for the second half. Northwest Rankin has the ball to begin the half. Scott 
Gaines, Watson, Brown, and Lewis on the court. For the Cougars, it's Cooper champion span, Harvey and Oscoffrey for the Pirates. Gaines tries to penetrate, has his shot blocked, but he's fouled. Fouls called against Jabari Oscoffrey for Jabari, his second personal, first team foul in the second half. And that's going to send Gaines to the free throw line. Gaines in that first half had eight free throw attempts, made seven of them. And he makes one here. Makes it a two-point lead for the Cougars. Makes that one as well, three-point lead for the Cougars. Trey Harvey again at working against that pressure defense. Get it up the court to Calvin Spans. Gonna take it all the way off the glass and score. 38-37, 7.20 to go in the third. Tried to get a shot up, couldn't get it to go, and it's out of bounds. It's going to be Northwest Rankin ball. Wide open is game. Somebody missed an assignment, and he hits the easy jumper. And we've got a foul called against Northwest Rankin. Number 23, part three Brown, that's four. First team foul, and that's a huge foul against the Cougars. Again, second leading scorer, averaging 13.2 points, has 10 points in this game. And he's out now with four fouls with just seven minutes to go in the third. Escoffrey going to penetrate, dishes back out high, almost thrown away, and over and back violation. They're saying it was deflected by the Cougars, and the referee says, nope, you touched it too, though. On the over and back turnover, it'll be Northwest Rankin ball. Scott back out high to Watson. Watson looks to penetrate. It's not there. Cooper's got him. Now he gets free. Dishes to the right side. And the Pirates come up with a turnover. Trey Harvey deflects it. Cooper's going to bring it up with six and a half. Jabari pumped the three, gives it into the corner. Deontay for three, no good. Rebounded by the Cougars. Into the corner, three-point shot is good by Gaines. Don't want to leave him open. Anthony Gaines averaging 10 a game. But he scored seven here in the third. He's got 20 in this game. Almost deflected another turnover. Cooper keeps control. Jabari is going to be fouled, pushed before the shot. Fouls called against Faraji McDonald, his first second team foul. Jabari will inbound to Cooper. Six point lead for the Cougars. Largest of either team. Harvey penetrates, dishes. Calvin's going to try to move it in. Doesn't get to a shot. Gets double team. Gets back to Cooper. He'll pull up from the free throw line. Jumper, no good. Champion with a rebound. And they're going to put it back out high and try to do it all over again. And an offensive foul is going to be called against Chris. Nope, it's called against Trey Harvey. His second personal, second team foul. Cooper, and a reach around, I think, by Chris Cooper. It is, and for Cooper, that's four. Third team foul. That'll get Demaris Brown up off the bench, checking in for Chris Cooper. 5.26 to go in the third. 43-37, Pirates trail the Cougars. Full court pressure almost stolen by Demaris Brown, but they will get it across the midcourt. And the shot's up and score the basket by number 40, Robert Lewis. 
Makes it an eight point Cougar lead. Five minutes to go into third. Deontay Champion, free throw line jumper, in and out, no good. Gaines dishes inside, Scott backs in, up over the top, score. Timeout taken, 4.41 to go into third, 10 point lead for the Cougars, back in 60 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road, or call to place your order at 601-939-6262, 601-939-6262. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Calvin Spann misses the jumper from the left elbow. Rebound taken down by the Cougars. They'll go back the other way, leading by 10. Three-point shot for Scott is good. And just like that, the Cougars jump out to a 13-point lead. 4-10 to go into third. Debo Taylor getting ready to check in. Also, Justin McGilberry. Hadn't seen him in a while. Shot's going to be blocked out of bounds. No. Cougar Pirates come away with it. Harvey dish off the glass, score, and he's fouled. Fouls called against number three, Faraji McDonald. Player down on the court is Faraji McDonald helping him up. They said he's okay. Trey Harvey scored the basket, drew the foul, so he'll go to the free throw line. Now the free throw by Trey. No good, rebound taken down by the Cougars. Justin McGilberry into the game. Hadn't seen him in a while, and I don't think he's even on the roster that I have, but Justin McGilberry, number 23. Gaines penetrates, dishes back, almost loses control. And got a whistle, and fouls called against Debo Taylor. His first personal, fourth team foul. It'll be Cougar ball, 3.20 to go. It's an 11-point lead. Out high with the ball is Watson. 50 to 39, Cougars lead. Third quarter of play, Watson looks to penetrate, dishes into the corner, gets it back. Got a foul called against Jadarius Scott. His second, fourth team foul. Three oh four to go in the third, 11 point lead. And we've got a whistle and a stoppage. Not sure what's going on, I think we've got. Nope, it's gonna be an inbound by the Pirates. I'm not sure what that was. Coach Sanders was talking. The referee thought he might be wanting a timeout. Somebody blew the whistle. No timeout taken, though. Dish to Taylor. Score! Nine-point lead. Tripped over a pirate. Falling down his gains, and a foul is going to be called. 
against Malik McNair. His first fifth team foul. It'll be Cougar ball on the side. Out of bounds off the Cougars. Pirates get the ball on the turnover. Checking in number zero, Douglas Spann, Jr. Goffrey for three, short, no good, rebounded by the Cougars. Right side to McDonald, down into the corner, Scott. Gains with it out at midcourt. 2.10 to go in the third, 50 to 41. Three point shot in the corners, no good. That was taken by Mike Amos, rebound down to the Pirates. Three pointer by McNair is no good. Foul called against Taylor, his second, sixth team foul. Cougar ball. Gain stepped on the line, out of bounds. Coach started to say something to the ref. Ref said, I'm looking right down the line at it. Just look down. Ref, Coach Sanders says, hey, my bad. You're right. He was out of bounds. Cross court to Escoffrey. McNair. McGillberry will take the three. No good. Minute and a half to go. It's a nine-point Cougar lead. Gaines. Against Miguel Berry, he's going to get a foul call. Nope, traveling call against Gaines. Lowered his shoulder into Justin. Justin stood his ground. Miguel Berry, baseline jumper inside, has it partially blocked. Champion can't get it back. Miguel Berry battle, and the Cougars are coming away with it. Scott from 18 hits the jumper. Back to an 11 point Cougar lead inside a minute to go into third. The Scoffrey from three downtown makes it eight, 45 seconds. Into the corner, two point shots blocked. Jabari Escoffrey there for the block. Inside to Scott. They're going to count the basket. And a foul is called against Trey Harvey. Three on Trey, 17 fouls. That'll send Scott to the free throw line for the and one. Ten point lead, he'll make it back to 11 with a basket from the free throw line. No good, rebounded by Champion. Pirates try to cut it to eight, seven with a three. 30 seconds to go in the third. Pass deflected, stolen away, turnover by the Pirates. Pirates get it right back. McGillberry call for the offensive foul. His first eighth team foul. Twenty seconds to go in the third. Ten point lead for the Cougars. Substitutes, right personnel on the court. Calvin Spence, I'm going to come in too. Sit down, Debo Taylor. 20 seconds to go in the third. 
10-point Cougar lead. Jabari applying a token pressure against Marcus Watson, Jr. 10 seconds. Watson way out here at midcourt. Seven seconds, six seconds, crossover dribble, dishes into the corner, three-point shot, no good. Rebound by the Pirates, and that will be the end of the third. Pirates trail by 10 back in 60 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road, or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Eight minutes on the clock, one quarter to go. Pearl trailing Northwest Rankin by a score of 54 to 44. Trying to come from behind. The Cougars took a big lead in that third quarter. They led by five. In fact, five was the largest of either team at the half, but the Cougars led at one time by 13, outscoring the Pirates 18 to 9 in that quarter. It was one point lead for Northwest Rankin at the half. The sky free into the corner to Harvey, back, span round the horn to the champion. DeMars from 15, in and out, no good, rebound. Two Pirates running each other, Trey Harvey comes up with it. Scramble for it and a push, and I think a foul's called. Who is it against? That's the question. Foul's called against number three for Northwest Rankin, Faraji McDonald with three, five team fouls. Pirates will maintain possession of the ball. Pirates have 18 fouls. The Northwest Rankin will be shooting at everyone. They've got one to give. They've only committed five. Two-point shots, no good by Span. The Cougars come down with a rebound, take it back the other way. Out high goes to Amos. Marcus Watson, Jr. will bring it out to midcourt, set it up. Scott pulls up from 15, misses the jumper, rebound by Span. Trey Harvey from three, no good. Rebound by Champion off the glass for the easy two. Seven minutes to go, it's now an eight point game. Gains on the dribble. Round the free throw line, up inside, can't get the shot to go. Scott for the board. Put back is good, and he's going to draw the foul. Foul's called against Jabari Escoffrey. Hits three on Jabari. Ninth team foul. Scott will be at the free throw line to complete the three-point play. Shooting 64% on the season, 84 of 132. He's 0 for 1 tonight. And he makes it here, though. Makes it 57-46, an 11-point lead with 6.45 to go. Jabari gets it back. Working against Mike Amos. Behind the back, three-point shot. Off the front of the iron, no good. Rebound. Jabari gets the put back and scores the basket. Timeout taken by Coach Evans. We'll take a timeout. Back in 30 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Signmark. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, 
Sign Mart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Sign Mart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. 6.25 to go. Pirates trail by nine to the Northwest Ranking Cougars here at Pearl High School trying to battle back. Good pressure. Marcus Watson in the corner tied up. Timeout taken. And we'll take a timeout. 6.20 to go. Back in 60 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. It was once called East Jackson, but the city of Pearl's been coming into its own ever since then. The folks at the Pearl Chamber of Commerce are proud of their city and want to give you just a few facts to consider. For instance, its commitment to excellence in education with Pearl's Public Schools and the Rankin Branch of Hines Community College. It's a community whose people are grounded in faith and family. Consider Pearl's political contributions. Ray Rogers and Dean Kirby in the state legislature and U.S. Congressman Greg Harper's district headquarters in his hometown of Pearl. It's become a handsome east entrance to the metro area on I-20 with shopping places like Bass Pro and the new Sam's Club and Trustmark Park, home of the Mississippi Braves. The state fire academies in Pearl and so is the state headquarters of NEMA and other government agencies. The newly elected slate of city officials is excited about Pearl and making it an even better place. It's come a long way from being just a quaint little neighborhood east of Jackson. The city of Pearl, a city creating its own future. Hometown Spotlight is sponsored by the Pearl Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Basketball. 6.20 to go. Pirates trail by nine. Cougars had to take a timeout as they got trapped in a corner on the full court pressure. Almost stolen away. Watson gets it. He's going to break the pressure across midcourt. Get in the hands of Tariq Brown off the glass. No good, but he's fouled. Calvin Spann thought he'd gotten by and made the block, but he's whistled for his third personal, 10th team foul. Tariq Brown's back into the game after sitting out most of the entire third quarter once he got that fourth personal foul early in the third. He has 10 points in the game. He's got a chance to get it at the free throw line now. In and out, no good. Brown, a 73% shooter on the season, 65 of 89. But he misses that one. Now Chris Cooper checks into the game. Jamar sits down. The Cougars are going to sacrifice the free throw rebound if he misses it, but he made it. It's a 10-point lead. Pirates have the ball as we hit the six-minute mark to go in the contest. Cooper to Harvey. Pirates doing a lot of standing around right now. Sure, they got something set, but it's just not formulating yet. Now in the paint, back out to Cooper. He's going to pull up in the free throw line. Jumpers, good. Now the, half, now the trap on the pressure, Marcus Watson, and the foul's called. And it's against Chris Cooper, and I think that's five on Chris Cooper. It is 5.35 to go, and Cooper fouls out. That's going to have the Cougars shooting free throws. Marcus Watson, Jr. will be at the line shooting two. Coach Evans, as he always does, when he gets that fifth foul, you get... I think it's 20 seconds that they give him to select that substitute. And he likes to take that full time and just think it over, talk it over. And he's looking at his player. Now he's going to put in Demaris Brown. Now Marcus Watson will be at the free throw line as he'll be shooting two. As the Pirates in the double penalty. First free throws, no good. It's an eight-point lead for the Cougars, 58-50. Second free throw is good as he makes one of two. 5.35, nine-point Cougar lead. Trey Harvey will bring the ball up the court. Right side into the corner, Jabari. A lot of time left, just got to be patient, get good shots. Champion, long three, no good. Demaris Brown, rebound, put back, and he can't get it to go. But he draws the foul, foul called against Anthony Gaines, his first, sixth team foul. Brown at the free throw line, shooting two, makes the first one. 
Would have loved to see him get that little put back to go and make a three-point play out of it, but try to get the two free throws. Makes one, not the second. Rebound by the Cougars. Taken away by the Pirates. Inside to Brown, gets the layup, good! It's a six-point lead for the Cougars. And they get by the press. Scott loses control of the ball, picked up by Gaines. Brown thought about the three and said, nope, we're going to take our time and set up for some shots. 4.45 to go. Watson on the dribble. Around the sky free, penetrates, dishes, off the glass, no good. Rebound taken down by the Pirates. Scott got inside, couldn't get it to go. Escoffrey for three. Good! Timeout taken. 4.29 to go. It's a three-point Cougar lead. Back in 60 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Signmark. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, SignMart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at SignMart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road, or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Tariq Brown on the other end gets the layup and scores the basket out of the timeout. Back to a five-point lead. Northwest Rankin trying to hold on. Cougars, uh, Pirates trying to battle back. 4-10 to go. Three, uh, Two-point shot. Left elbow is no good. Brown over the back. He'll be whistled for the foul. For DeMars, that's his first. 12th team foul. Spann took the jumper from the left elbow. That's going to have Gaines shooting. Not who you want to be at the free throw line. Tonight he's 9 of 10 from the line. He can make it back to a seven-point game with two here, and he makes the first one. 4.08 to go. Coach Evans has two timeouts. Coach Sanders only with one. That could prove critical as we go down the stretch. Both free throws are good by Gaines. Back to a seven-point Northwest Rankin lead. Jabari Escoffrey to Trey Harvey. Plenty of time, but each possession is critical for the Pirates. We want to get good possessions, good shots. Champion for three, as I say it, in and out, no good. Jabari Escoffrey battles, but can't get the rebound. And we've got a whistle and a foul call. Who's it against? Fouls called against Jabari Escoffrey. That's four on Jabari. We'll go the other way, and Faraji McDonald will go to the free throw line where he'll be shooting two. Rattles around and goes in. McDonald on the season shooting 48%. Misses the second one. Eight-point lead for the Cougars. No need to panic and get in a hurry. Still got a lot of time. Trey Harvey pulls up from 15, hits the jumper. Cougars bring it up to court. Stolen away, Trey Harvey, two on one break. Here comes three. Trey takes it himself, rolls it around, score the basket, and the foul. Fouls called against for Raji McDonald. That's four on McDonald. 17 fouls. 
Trey Harvey will be at the free throw line to complete the three-point play. It's a four-point lead for Northwest Rankin. Trey with a chance to cut it to Trey. And he does. 3.20 to go. 64-61. Pressure by the Cougars. Stepped on the inline. Turnover by Northwest Rankin. Pearl gets the ball back. A chance to cut it to one, if not tie it with a three. Jabari Scott having a conversation with one of the officials. Now we're ready to go. Harvey inbounds to Jabari for three. No good. It's champion for the rebound to put back. No good. And out of bounds, and it's Cougar ball. Calvin Spann will check in. Malik McNair will sit down. Foul situation. Cougars will be shooting two at every foul. Don't there's Rankin uh, with uh, seven. Have Pearl shooting one and one with every foul. Gaines passes. Brown blocked. Rebound by Demaris Brown. Inside. Spann fouled hard. Goes to the ground. Scott commits it, I think. It is against Scott. That's three on him. Eight team fouls. Calvin Spann at the free throw line will be shooting two. Calvin on the season. 64% shooter to make it a one-point game with two free throws. First one's good. 64-62, 2.57 to go. Northwest Rankin has one timeout remaining. Pearl has two timeouts remaining. Second free throw. Both of them. Nothing but net. One point lead for the Cougars. Gaines penetrates. Up. No good. Rebound by Spann. And the Pirates will have a chance to take a lead for the first time in a long time. 2.40 to go. 64-63. Jabari Escoffrey, Brown in the corner. DeMars looks to penetrate, loses it, and on the turnover, the Cougars come up with the ball. And loose on the floor, Dish Champion lays it up, no good! A big miss by Deontay Champion. He had an easy layup, couldn't get it to go. Gains the other way, fouled. Deontay Champion knows he missed an easy point-blank shot. Fouls called by Deontay Champion the other end, his first. At the free throw line, I think is going to be Gaines. It is. Deontay Champion has hit some clutch three-pointers this season, but he just missed a point-blank easy two-pointer that would have given the Pirates the lead. I believe some frustration on that end of it caused that foul. Two-point lead now for Northwest Rankin. Second free throw coming from Gaines. No good. It's a two-point lead, 65-63, 2 to go. Two timeouts remaining for Pearl if they choose. Malik McNair working on the dribble, gets it to... Deontay for three, no good. Rebound by the Cougars. Loose on the floor, scramble and a foul's called. I think Trey Harvey. It is Trey Harvey with his fourth personal. That he was scrambling for a loose ball, but it'll be a foul called. He'll be going the other end to shoot two free throws. Marcus Watson Jr. will be the free throw shooter. He's one for two tonight on the season, 46 of 98, a 47% shooter. That's what you want now if you're a pirate is to go one of two. Misses the first one, now you'll take 0 for two. At best, you were hoping for one of two when he got there. That would have made it a three-point game. Now you hope for 0 for two and keep it at two. Minute 50 to go. No good, he misses them both. Pirates only trailing by two, minute 45 remaining. Trey Harvey going to walk it up the court. A lot of time. 
No need to get anything crazy. Trey Harvey travel with the ball. Happy steps, happy feet, moved too many times. Minute 28, big turnover by the Pirates. It'll be Northwest ranking ball. Wilson's a book, can't figure out who's wanting what to wait, but now they're getting ready. Northwest ranking inbound right here in front of the Pearl bench. Gaines will inbound, gets it into Watson, back to Gaines. He'll get it across midcourt easily. Penetrates, loses it, gets it back to Scott. Up, no good. Rebound by Trey Harvey. Long up the court, bad pass. Scott runs over. No, we got a block against Fan. Calvin Span whistle for the foul. That's four on Calvin. Watson down on the floor. And he's going to come out of the game. And checking in will be Michael Amos. And Amos will go shoot free throws for him. Amos has not been to the line tonight on the season, a 57% shooter. And he makes the first one. It's a three-point game. Watson at the line had been one of four, missed his last two. But now Amos, since Watson was injured, gets to come in and shoot for him. He makes the first one a three-point game. This will make it four if it goes in. And he does. Four-point lead for Northwest Rankin, 67-63. Minute 10 to go. Cougars do have one timeout. Pirates have two. Right now the Cougars don't want him, but the Pirates may need it. Malik McNair inside the champion. Stolen away. Trey Harvey gets it back. One minute. Jabari to Harvey for three. Good! One point game, 52-56, timeout. Back in 60 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Fifty-two point six seconds on the clock. Northwest Rankin, sixty-seven. Pearl, sixty-six. Northwest Rankin has the ball. They got to go the full distance of the court. The pressure defense by Pearl has given them some problems. They throw it long up the court. Deontay Champion deflection. Calvin Span with the ball. Pirates get the turnover. Trailing by one. Need a good shot. Span inside, turns around, off the glass, no good. Rebound taken down by the Cougars. Not a good shot in my opinion. When you got to have a basket, fouls called against Demaris Brown, his second. You're trailing by one, you got lots of time on the clock, you got to have a basket. In my opinion, that was not the shot you wanted. Marcus Watson back at the free throw line, he'll be shooting two. I'd have much rather seen the Pirates pull it back, set it, make it work. Two-point game as Watson hits a free throw. 35.9, each team with one timeout remaining. Mike Amos will be checking in for the shooter should Watson make this free throw. And he does. 
three-point lead. Pirates 35.9. You don't have to have a three. You can take a two, get a quick chance, get the ball back. I got a feeling we'll be looking for a three. They'll got Jamaria Scoffrey, Deontay Champion, a couple of good three-point shooters. Chris Cooper fouled out, remember. He's another three-point shooter. Trey Harvey has hit a three tonight. 24 seconds. Trey inside. Back to Deontay. Hesitated. Didn't take it. Malik for three. No good. Rebound. Champion. Put back is good. Timeout. One point game, 14.4, back in 60 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. It was once called East Jackson, but the city of Pearl's been coming into its own ever since then. The folks at the Pearl Chamber of Commerce are proud of their city and want to give you just a few facts to consider. For instance, its commitment to excellence in education with Pearl's Public Schools and the Rankin Branch of Hines Community College. It's a community whose people are grounded in faith and family. Consider Pearl's political contributions, Ray Rogers and Dean Kirby in the state legislature, and U.S. Congressman Greg Harper's district headquarters in his hometown of Pearl. It's become a handsome east entrance to the metro area on I-20 with shopping places like Bass Pro and the new Sam's Club, and Trustmark Park, home of the Mississippi Braves. The state fire academies in Pearl, and so is the state headquarters of NEMA and other government agencies. The newly elected slate of city officials is excited about Pearl and making it an even better place. It's come a long way from being just a quaint little neighborhood east of Jackson. The city of Pearl, a city creating its own future. Hometown Spotlight is sponsored by the Pearl Chamber of Commerce. Northwest Rankin has the ball, leading 69-68, 14.4 seconds on the clock. Pearl's got to do one of two things. You've got to have a steal quick. If you get a steal, you got plenty of time to get a shot. No sense rushing it because you want it to shot to win. You don't get a steal, you got a foul. Hope they miss a free throw and you get a chance to win it in regulation. Or if they make them both, get an overtime, three, a tie to overtime. Watson up the court, got to get the ball in a hurry. And the Cougars got it, seven seconds, six seconds. Brown with it, he's going to be fouled with 4.3 seconds on the clock. Demaris Brown commits the foul. In my opinion, way too long to get that foul. Taree Brown at the free throw line, shooting two. But now you only have 4.3 seconds to answer. Brown's a 73% shooter. He's the best free throw shooter on the team. But he misses the first one. Now all you got to have is a two. The Pirates have no timeouts remaining. So you can't stop the clock. So if Brown smart, he misses this free throw, really. He makes it, though. And timeout taken by Northwest Rankin. Two-point lead for the Cougars, 4.3 seconds. Let's take 30 seconds. We'll be back on the Pirate Media Network. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Two-point lead. Northwest Rankin, 70. Pearl, 68. 4.3 seconds on the clock. Cougars have led the entire second half. Pearl's had some chances, but unable to capitalize. Right now, they'll have the ball. They'll have to go the distance of the court. They got 4.3 seconds. Got to get a two to tie. A three-pointer wins the game. If I know this Pirate team, it'll be a three-point shot. We're not really probably looking at an overtime chance. Jabari Escoffrey is going to inbound. Usually look for the inbound guy to get the best chance at a shot. He's your shooter. Northwest Rankin knows that. Jabari's going to inbound. Gets it in to McNair. you got to hurry the ball up the court. McNair crosses midcourt. Champion, no! He tried to pass it, never got a shot up. 70 for Northwest Rankin, 68 for Pearl. They never got a shot up. An extra pass. He didn't have time for it. That's the end of regulation and the end of the game. Northwest Rankin wins, 70 to 68. The Cougars improve to 12 and 13. Pearl falls to 13-11 back in 30 seconds on the Pirate Media Network. 
Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Basketball here on the Pirate Media Network. The Pirates lose to the Cougars of Northwest Rankin tonight. Disappointing loss, 70-68. to Coach Evans over talking to Deontay Champion and Malik McNair right now. A little last-minute pep talk for them. I'm sure they're real disappointed. Didn't get the play he wanted, I think. I think Deontay to take the shot, get a quicker pass, but you don't have that much time. Malik took a while to get the ball up the court. Now coming over here, head coach Russell Evans. Coach Evans, first thing, uh, disappointing loss. You had a chance at the end. What were you just telling those guys right there after the game was over? I know, tell them what you're instructing well, probably what they did wrong. Thinking about it, I was telling them, hey, I don't, I don't care who shoot the ball in that situation. You can be a sophomore, junior, senior. Y'all gonna be with me for a couple of years. I just want you to take that shot. Don't be afraid to take the money shot. That's the one you want. That's the one you shoot every day when we horn winding down. Just shoot the ball. I ain't gonna be mad. That's, I just want a shot up. And sometimes they're so unselfish right. and they look for other people so much. I said, guys, y'all not sophomores anymore. Y'all juniors now, and y'all going to be some great basketball players. You're going to take that shot now, you know what it feels like down the line. I'm, words of encouragement. Coach, and I figured that's what it was. Coach, when you look at this game tonight, a game that the first half, the biggest lead by either team was five. We were down by one at the half. Third quarter was the, was the difference of the whole ball game. What happened in that third quarter? Well, third quarter, we stopped playing defense. We stopped playing defense. They got on the run. They started making threes. We come back down. We, we were shooting threes, but wasn't making threes. But when we started getting to the basket, to the free throw line, they'll get our adrenaline going. No, we're not a great three-point shooter team. We'll make some here and there, but that, that's not our strength. Right. Our strength is get to the basket, to the free throw line, and make them easy shots up in there. Coach, obviously disappointed in the loss tonight. We got one more game at home this season and the regular season will be the Brandon this coming Tuesday night. You go into the locker room now, you'll meet with the guys. What would you tell them as you wrap this game up tonight, move forward to Brandon and get ready for playoffs? The game was, was there for us to win. We was down one point and, and Tay missed the put back, easy right. put back, then another one. Then we missed a shot in the middle. McCabe, I told him, you hadn't made one all night. It's not heat check time right now. <laughs> Just get it to the open man. But, you know, one thing about them, you know, them young babies, they're going to grow up yep. and they're growing up right before our eyes and they're going to be something special. And we say, hey, Brandon, that's, that's all I need to say for Brandon. That's right. That's all I need to say about to get him motivated. Brandon. Good deal. All Coach, right. thanks a lot. Head Coach Russell Evans, obviously disappointed in a loss tonight. A game that the Pirates had a chance to win. A game that maybe they should have won with some opportunities. As you heard him say, Calvin Spann with a shot. Maybe it wasn't time to take that shot. Deontay Champion missing a putback. You heard him talk about not getting a shot off at the end of the game, that you got to get a shot up. Just throw it up. you got to do something towards the basket to have a chance to get it to go in didn't happen it didn't work out the Pirates fall to 13 and 11 final game of the regular season at Pearl High School will be Tuesday night as the Brandon Bulldogs come calling on the Pearl Pirates you heard coach Evans just say what do you have to say about Brandon Brandon that's it that should be all it takes it'll be a big game tonight on Tuesday night senior night here at Pearl High School hope you'll join us here if you can't make sure and tune in here on the Pirate Media Network thanks for watching tonight Two losses by the Pearl Pirates to the Northwest Rankin Cougars. Disappointing games. We'll try to bounce back next week. Thanks to Greg Cuspid back at the studio. Thanks to Carol Davis on the camera. Frank Cutton, our executive producer, back in the Pearl High School studios here at Pearl High School. Tonight's broadcast of Pearl Pirate Athletics is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, downloads, or copying of any type without the expressed written permission of the Pirate Media Network is strictly prohibited. Until Tuesday night, I'm DP saying good night, everybody.